Okay, I was born in um, Hollywood, California, uh, September 5, 1930. We lived in what you call a um, yellow ghetto, everybody called it, because it was all uh, Nisei's that lived uh, nearby. Um, my mother came from Japan when she was about 16, and um, she came with her parents, you know, I, my grandfather and grandmother, and they lived in Santa Paula. And then my father was, father, mother, it was an arranged marriage. Um, my father used to read and write English, so he was pretty good. But my mother uh, never learned, so our first language was Japanese. And so when I went to, first I went to elementary school, it was kind of hard to pick up um, English because, you know, Japanese was our first language in kindergarten. We just saw signs on the wall, you know, uh, at the store and everything. The people at the store used to say, hey, we're going to be evacuated. And so I think my parents got a phone call from someone saying that you have to uh, get rid of everything. You're going to have to leave home. So a lot of things we had to bury because, like I said, the FBI was looking for something to connect us with uh, Japan. So we had some kimono because we used to dance. So we had to bury all that. It was a shock, you know. I know my parents had a hard time. And so it was, they just gave us uh, three, four days to prepare to leave. But when we got to the bus depot, there were soldiers with uh, guns. And so they used to say, no, uh, line up, line up and get onto the bus and don't talk about anything. Don't talk to your neighbors. We went to Heart Mountain. And so in order to go from Assembly Center to Heart Mountain, it's more like a concentration camp. We had to get on the train, which was exciting at that time. And so being so young, I kept trying to peek out the window and the soldier would come with a gun and tell us, put that shade down, don't, don't uh, talk to your neighbor and don't look out the window. And so, it used to scare me because, you know, I never saw a soldier before, especially with a gun. And the first year, it was so windy and so cold. And, you know, it was like a sandstorm all the time. And being from sunny California, it was a shock to us because, you know, we didn't, they gave us pea coats to wear, but pea coats weren't heavy enough for someone from Southern California. And so we had to walk to uh, class, and oh, it was just miserable because it was so cold to walk walk um, along the barracks to the classroom. But uh, I think six months before we were able to leave, I think they gave a few passes out to a few people. So they were able to go to Cody Cody, Wyoming. But then you go to Cody and you couldn't go to any store or anything because they kept saying no Japs allowed. And so I know even after, uh, let me see, after the war, I, we went out to Cody, Wyoming, and then we went to an ice cream place. And you thought, well, it's been about 10 years since camp closed. And so we went to this ice cream place and they said, we don't serve Japs. And so they were still um, at the point where they just didn't um, tolerate any Asians. And they'll spit at you if you tried to get it, you know, get anywhere. Oh, it took a long time for the attitude to change because for the longest time, Anywhere you went, we, they would say, no Japs allowed. And then, especially in the Virgil area, there was Bimini, a swimming pool. E even before the war started, they said, no Japs allowed. 
Yeah, the Japanese side is where you study hard, you work hard, and, you know, obey your elders. But um, being American, I said, gee, you know what? I'm, I'm a person. I should be able to determine what I want to do and the way I think. No one should tell me how to think. So that's my American side. And, and so I used to think, well, the Japanese side, you know, um, you, you work hard, you, you stay home, and you cook and take care of your family. But the American side, you're more independent. You want to go out and uh, earn your own living and be independent. And so the two put together is you take the good side of the Asian culture and the American culture, and you kind of blend it together. <laughs>